Hey all, today I would like to talk about one of my favourite DC characters, the Laughing Magician Constantine. I'm going to go over Constantine's powers in this video, and I say it that way because it seems weird to try and talk about how strong Constantine is. He very rarely works that way. You'll have to buckle in for the long ride on this one, there's a lot to say about the Hellblazer. I'll be covering both classic and modern New 52 Constantine, but they should be more or less the same character due to the events of Convergence, where most characters were combined with their other iterations anyway. Obviously, I won't be able to go over everything, there's probably even more to go over for Constantine than there is for Superman, but we'll try and get there. I'll start off with what is hopefully the obvious. Constantine is a relatively normal human when it comes to his actual body. Well, he's got a bit of demon's blood in him, but who hasn't these days? He's often outgunned by his adversaries, and he's stated repeatedly that he's not the best or strongest wielder of magic. He might not even be the most intelligent magician, but he is the most cunning. There's a reason that Batman follows Constantine's lead when they team up. And this is where the Hellblazer shines. In those moments where he seems outmatched at every corner, and makes it out with nothing but his wit. I mean, who else would go up to goddamn Trigon, destroyer of all that exists, and ask him to light your cigarette? I think this is what makes Constantine such an intriguing character. He's this odd, interesting parallel to heroes like Superman. The Man of Steel is kind of this paragon of good who won't back down until he gets the happy ending no matter how many times he fails. Which is very endearing, I like Superman. A lot of his will to go on is inspiring, even. But Constantine is different. He's willing to get down and dirty. He'll do what it takes to beat the bad guys, even if he has to be a little bad himself to do it. His own immorality and corruption is often a joke throughout his appearances. In some cases, this even leads to some good scaling. During one of his misadventures with the JLA, they encountered Pandora's box, an artifact that would corrupt anyone who touched it, even characters with decent resistance to those sort of things like Shazam. It would turn them into rampant aggressors, just going wild on anyone near them. Not Constantine though. In his own words, this was because you can't soil a pot that's already filthy love. On a similar note, Dead Man can't possess him because his soul or mind is too filthy. Bearing in mind that this same dead man has possessed ancient eldritch beings older than the new gods, Trigon's kids, and the phantom stranger, God's personal appointed betrayer, and he still couldn't stand being inside Constantine's head for more than a moment. One of Constantine's best assets is his ability to know when things have gone wrong. He can tell when a death had occurred within a room in the past, he sensed the creation of the strange abomination made by Nagal, and he was able to detect magical disturbances from the other side of creation instinctively. Things like that. So this doesn't seem like much, but information really is power to someone like Constantine, and often, just knowing the situation is enough for him to succeed against the worst odds. When prep is your strong suit, a little forewarning is a powerful asset. These powers, and his successes in general, might have something to do with Constantine's signature ability, the synchronicity wave. This essentially gives him good luck. He tends to be in the right place at the right time, and misfortune that would befall him tends to befall others in his place. It seems like Constantine does this passively as well. He essentially rides the wave of fate. This force is so potent that Lucifer Morningstar considers it relevant. Even distance and time themselves are said to sit up and beg for someone riding the synchronicity highway. Some other assorted hacks of his include instinctively phasing attacks into a pocket dimension so that they can never touch him like he did against Frankenstein. In this same scan, he incapacitates Frankenstein with a single word, claiming that it could bore into the pits of your soul. Bear in mind that Frankenstein has tangled with foes like Nebula Man before, who is a living universe. He also directly resisted the effects of the time gremlins created by Pralaya that were able to erase all of creation, like he, he literally swallowed them, and was even able to survive against Dr. Destiny, who in some iterations is portrayed as being relative to Dream of the Endless, 
although I'm unsure of the canonity of this particular event, because the Doctor Destiny that scales to Dream of the Endless might be a different iteration. Regardless, Constantine has held the Dreamstone in his bare hands before without being injured, despite how powerful it is, and despite the fact that it's harmed Dream of the Endless himself before. The Hellblazer's Palinol is top-notch too. He's been able to easily incapacitate Swamp Thing completely by cutting him off from the green. Against a magical being that was far more powerful than himself, he was able to null them by putting their magic power itself somewhere else for a moment. It doesn't just stop at power null though, he can straight up take your magic for his own like he did against the golden boy, his twin from another reality. And he has seals that can lock up some of the most powerful characters in DC. He's created seals to temporarily trap Zoriel, an angel strong enough to completely erase the Phantom Stranger in one shot, a being who himself is a threat to all of creation. On another occasion, Constantine forcefully summoned the Phantom Stranger against his will, proceeded to blackmail him with one of his silver coins, and then just as casually banished him again, also against his will. In a conversation with the Presence, God warned him that the Phantom Stranger might turn on him, with Constantine responding that he would have no problem dealing with him. The Phantom Stranger is just one member of the Trinity of Sin, the other two being The Question and Pandora, but Constantine has been shown to scale above the entire Trinity on a few occasions. As mentioned before, Pandora's box couldn't affect him, and on another occasion, over the course of 12 hours, he was able to capture and contain all three of them by himself, even after creating seven seals that supposedly even God himself wouldn't have been able to get past. He also straight up tells the Phantom Stranger during his little blackmail session that the Justice League Dark has defeated enemies that make the Trinity of Sin look like the Three Stooges. He's utilized a spell called the Turnabout spell, which is essentially magic that returns all damage dealt to Constantine back to the person trying to deal it. Constantine obviously has a fair amount of mind hacks related powers as well. On a cork board inside the House of Mystery, Constantine has notes on many of the Justice League members, and his note for Martian Manhunter says that he keeps trying and failing to wipe his identity from Constantine's mind. Constantine has created illusions that directly attack another person's guilt or bad conscience, which can be surprisingly effective depending on the character in question. It was at least enough to force a hardened criminal to suicide. Another illusion he created simulated the trial of Anubis, where one's morality is measured and the loser is killed. It was so potent and convincing that he was able to actually kill Nabu, the Lord of Order behind Dr. Fate, purely using the illusion. And of course he can do standard things like reading the minds of others or controlling their actions. In a more general sense, he also has access to a variety of curses. He cursed some random guy with bowel problems, erectile dysfunction, and a broken TV. He cursed his dad to a slow and painful death by connecting his life to a dead cat. And he made a bunch of criminals go mad when they tried to mess with him in prison. Even something as innocuous as his cigarette smoke is a powerful ward, even against opponents more powerful than himself, like Mr. E, who was amped by one third of all of the artifacts Constantine had ever collected over his life as a magician. Early into his run, he was able to use something called quantum magic, a type of mathematical magic that has allowed characters to travel all the way out through the fifth dimension and to limbo before. It has also been acknowledged as the power source behind Superman Blue, and as a power beyond even Kismet's. Kismet being the representation of an at least 11th dimensional universe, and as the dividing line between the Lords of Order and Chaos. He of course has time travel as well, even showing the capability of reacting to a spell intended to send him through time, and changing the spell mid-effect to send him where he wanted to go instead of the designated time, which is incredibly dangerous by the way. He's died and returned from death numerous times, that goes double for the number of times he's escaped from hell unscathed, although these are often left unexplained. Packed along with all this hacks, the Laughing Magician seems to have respectable speed as well, despite what you might think. As we already saw, 
time and distance themselves bend the knee to Constantine whilst he is riding the synchronicity highway, which he always is. If fate dictates that it would be best for Constantine to be in a certain place at a certain time, he will be there. This is already what we would call irrelevant speed, where both parts of the speed equation don't apply to the character's movement. But he has his own feats on this level as well. He was able to easily evade a punch from the Spectre. On the left there, you can see the Spectre trying to punch him. And on the right page, you can see him pointing and laughing at God, completely unarmed. He is able to traverse the green using something called a wood walk, thanks to the pint of druid's blood inside him that he was able to win in a very enjoyable game of chance. After resisting God's influence, he was able to evade Zoriel long enough to trick him into the House of Mystery, where Constantine summoned a seal underneath him. Which leads me onto the house itself. Constantine was able to win the House of Mystery off of Father Time and Doctor Occult in a game of poker. The house exists outside of time and space, and can be summoned by Constantine at any time. It has inbuilt traps and defences within it, some natural to the house and others set up by Constantine, notably the seals I mentioned earlier. The Phantom Stranger was completely mind-hexed and became lost within the house after he tried to leave it. When Swamp Thing was attempting to use the power of the entire green against Nightmare Nurse and Constantine, the house stepped in to protect him. Anyone that accepts an invitation into the House of Mystery can then be forcefully summoned by Constantine to fight for him. This includes a huge range of characters, from Swamp Thing, Zatanna, and Dead Man, to beings like the Spectre or Zoriel. The house doesn't offer half bad protection either. Should it ever become damaged or destroyed in any way, it will simply regenerate. And after the destruction of all of creation by Pralayar, the house and Constantine were the only things left remaining in the end. The seals put onto the house by Constantine even allowed it to withstand direct attacks from Pralaya, a being powerful enough to swallow God himself. Sounds like one hell of a poker game to me, that's for sure. He has some other useful artifacts as well, like the Moonblade, a weapon capable of directly affecting concepts and trapping gods within it, which he used to seal away Mr. E, who I mentioned earlier. Another blade of his, called the Twin Blade, was forged from two Lords of Hell, and was capable of rending the first of the fallen mortal and killing him. Constantine occasionally carries an artifact known as a fairy prison that can capture and seal things. He owns the skeleton key, a key capable of opening anything in creation. It was notably capable of opening a box that contained books that many, many uh, sorcerers wanted from across the planet, but nobody could get into it except for Constantine with this key. Against an amped Swamp Thing, he used wish-granting magic matches from the Parliament of Flames to depower him for one hour. This particular Swamp Thing had power on par with the voice of God at this time. Constantine also keeps all of his clothes heavily warded and protected at all times, as you would expect. All of this might make it seem like Constantine is all hacks and no brawn, which is somewhat true, but he's pulled out some serious AP feats using his magic before as well. He literally tore Nagal's spine right out of his body with his bare hands, which is even more impressive when you consider that Nagal's body was so large and complex that Richie was losing his mind after trying to process it, even though he has travelled all the way to Limbo using quantum magic, making Nagal's physical body larger than Limbo itself, which is an outerversal realm. This is of course possible due to weird demon magic. When fighting the Upside Down Man, he unleashed a seal that was capable of killing God. It didn't work on the Upside Down Man due to his invulnerability to magic, however, saying that it was like throwing a bucket of water into a tsunami. Blight is probably the toughest enemy that Constantine has ever tried to face. Well, excluding fucking Margaret Thatcher, that is. Blight is the embodiment of humanity's shadow and represents the evil in all men's hearts given life and form. Blight's mere existence is enough to corrupt those around him, and his actions were causing creation itself to crack open. Blight was shown easily dealing with the Phantom Stranger and Zoriel, with neither of them being able to hurt him at all. Even the Presence fears Blight, because as long as a single man harbours a single dark thought, Blight will exist, and that is something God himself cannot prevent. 
Blight continues to go stronger over time as well, as the evil he spreads thereby increases his power. But Constantine and Nightmare Nurse were able to force this monster to his knees using something called the Blackmare Curse, turning them both into mini Blights themselves. They were able to overpower Blight temporarily, but unfortunately it was no use, as attempting to defeat or harm Blight in any way is itself a dark thought that only makes him stronger. The Black Mare Curse also comes with the downside of making Constantine an uncontrollable beast, but it does come with immense power. Now, I'm sure it's pretty common knowledge that the source of much of Constantine's magic is the demon blood running through his veins, something that was given to him by Nogal very early into his Hellblazer run. So you would think that without this, Constantine would be pretty useless. Well, this actually happened. The aforementioned Upside Down Man, a being who is the embodiment of the Great Darkness itself, ripped the demon's blood from Constantine. But even after this, the Hellblazer was able to perform some incredibly high-end feats. He puppeteered Swamp Thing, using a massive beacon of magic to fight Nabu. He created a blast so powerful using forbidden dark magic that Nabu was forced to protect himself with a ward, causing Constantine to hurt a tree of wonder-amped Swamp Thing instead. He was able to use a binding spell on witch-marked Wonder Woman, who rivaled Hecate in power. He also excised Hecate from three other victims. Hecate herself was able to fight with the Upside Down Man, the incarnation of a being equal to the presence. All of this was performed without any demon's blood at all. He should of course still have access to the Synchronicity Wave without his demon's blood too, since that comes from his lineage as a laughing magician and not his demon's blood. Even when there was next to no magic to tap into at all due to the Vampire Kane absorbing it, he was still capable of creating a portal to the afterlife. Some other miscellaneous feats I was unsure where else to put include the time that Constantine, Swamp Thing, and Nightmare Nurse all merged with the collective consciousness of every soul to have ever existed. Constantine could continue to fight even when his soul was removed from his body, He's broken the rules of hell, preventing him from ever going there when he dies. He was able to trick Billy Batson into empowering Constantine with the powers of Shazam so that he could fight a demon. The King of Vampires was unable to affect him thanks to his demon blood, instead just burning the bloodsucker. He can summon demons, although this seems to be a bit hit and miss, as on one occasion he accidentally summoned his target's demon servant instead. He has a spell to pull clones of himself back into his body. He has a little demon familiar attached to the House of Mystery called Noel. Not that this demon has any real feats, though. And he's resisted and unwound a spell that would have otherwise wiped his memory. In one of his more classic escapades, Constantine is on the brink of death due to cancer, and the first of the fallen has already claimed his soul. So he then tricks two other Lords of Hell into also buying his soul, making each of them obliged to take it, which would force Hell into a terrible internal struggle, leaving them vulnerable to the forces of Heaven, who would then defeat them. What this basically meant is that these Lords of Hell were forced to keep Constantine alive so he would never die and they would never be obligated to collect his soul, and as such, they had to cure his lung cancer. He has also directly threatened the presence that one time, which seemed to work for whatever that's worth, but it's not really a direct feat, it was more so just Constantine saying that he would rile up a bunch of problems in hell if the presence didn't do what he wanted. Honestly, I'm sure there are several feats I neglected to go over in this video, but it's pretty in-depth already, so I'll leave it here. I hope you all enjoyed my little rundown of Constantine in this video. Go ahead and check out the rest of my channel for more DC stuff, and give me some ideas in the comments for videos you would like to see. And otherwise, I will see you all next time.